crazy t-shirt Mary that is so you always trying to make people laugh and cheer us up I guess it is but let me ask you something what about you when are you gonna be happy again I'm all right I'm doing better nowadays so does that mean you're finally gonna move on maybe it's Raleigh it's Raleigh, isn't it? I know you've liked him since high school. I suppose I have. But he was Jim's from Godbrother. Hmm. I don't know if he's coming around because of that or... If or if it's to see you. Maybe it's both. Anyway, I think it's time that you found out. Come on. You are one of the smartest people that I know. Ask him out. Invite him to dinner. Take Jamie over to your sister's place. And no offense, but you have got to stop wearing those crazy t-shirts. <laughs> he needs to see you in a different way and in a different light. Ten forty-two. So you're telling me someone actually trusts you with money? You know it. My folks know that the casino is about an hour away and uh, my truck needs some attention. You know, I always trusted your parents' judgment. Oh, so you're the funny one. You know, I can come by your yard and do some work. Although, with all this verbal abuse I get. Come on, you know I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. See you later. See you. I tried to warn you, Raleigh. Uh, I'd believe it maybe if it was me, but you? No way. Yeah, right, Al. You tried to go after her too. You ain't gotta lie. If I even tried to make a move, it'd be a no contest. My dad used to have a word for people just like you. What do you used to call him? Uh, a boob. That was the word, a boob. You're a boob. You mean somebody that's so blind they can't see right out in front of their bony nose what's right in front of them. Yeah, boob is a perfect word for Raleigh. Boob Lamoureux. Yeah, right. Face it, Raleigh, you had one of the finest women on this reservation right in your lap, and you blew it. You know, if I was working with her, it'd be like, here's your coffee, you want some cinnamon buns, you want a bun, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? I give a lot to be in your situation. Yeah. I bet you would. i take that bet. If I had a girl like Mary uh, flies at night, looking at me the way she looked at you, shit. I'd consider ending my old wild and crazy bachelor ways. Okay. <laughs> wild and crazy is probably the funniest thing I heard you say all day. What? Listen, Bozo Boy here has been in love with so many women, and how many have worked out? Listen here, Raleigh, you're gonna be living with your folks till you are 90. You know what's sad? Two lonely losers whining about girls, and I got mine. You guys better get yours. Ain't nothing like working on old farm equipment. Nothing works, Dad. She either ignores me, rolls her eyes, stares bullets into me, or argues with me. Well, arguing, hand me that breaker boy. It takes two to argue, don't it? Ugh. But it's a form of communication, I guess. It's a start, I guess. Some start. Hand me that grease gun, would you? Maybe you need elk medicine. Don't take it the wrong way. I mean, your mom and I have always commented on how handsome you are, but maybe you could use a little help. Elk dreamer, huh? 
So that's how you got mom to fall in love with your ugly Anze. Oh yeah, best elk dreamer I could find. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah, but your mom was not was not so easy. I asked her to marry me three years in a row. Every year she didn't respond. On the fourth year she asked, do I have to? I think she had a deal going with Lala Johnny. He was sly. Every time I went to see your mom, there was a haying machine to fix, an outhouse to be dug, wood to be split. Always some, something to build or fix. <laughs> we talk. Uh, I never knew if that translated into son-in-law or slave. That's how they broke me in. Oh, jeez. You scared me. Hang on. Is your mom home? No, she's... She's... I just came back. She's not home. So you're all alone? She... She doesn't come back. She doesn't come back before the time. Where does she go? Uh, but she's sad to she goes somewhere. Mm, that's okay. We all get sad. Moccasin Telegraph says that the Talking Crow family is coming back from Minneapolis. Must be that big new mobile home going up next to the old folks' abandoned log cabin. Yeah, and so you don't sound very enthused. Yeah, his name is Elmer. We used to go to school together don't know, years ago. We used to fight a lot in the schoolyard, but punching him out sure gave me a nice two-week vacation from mean old Miss Darwood. You? You're joshing me. Nope.
I know you've talked about it before, but it just seems so out of the blue. Does Bessie know? Uh-huh. I will. I promise. I know I said I would, but that was years ago. I'm 22 now. I have life. You know what? I'll give it some thought. I don't know. Yeah. Look, um, I gotta go. Bye. Remember what you told me last night about your folks moving? Yeah. You know, I've been given a lot of thought. Amen. And... And I love you. And I asked you to marry me. And you haven't said yes. No, maybe, maybe you should go with them. Try living on the reservation. You got a thought. That way, when you come back, if you come back, I know it's for me. It's not for you. It's not for your parents. It may be hard to understand. Try me. Oh, when I look in the mirror, I see a look called a woman. But even though I minored in Indian studies the way my parents raised me, I've never lived with my own people. As an Indian, Sometimes I feel like a fraud. I don't even know who I am. never get these proportions right. Well, I tried to give him a bumper sticker and he practically tore my head off. I mean, people around here are so close-minded. That's probably why things around here never change. Well, why do you think we stayed away for so long? People around here are stuck in the past. I mean, I guess there's some good and some bad to it. Well, it's just so unfortunate that young men are so ignorant, so... Opinionated? Yes, opinionated. I mean, it's one thing to have an opinion, and it's another thing to have something to back it up with. Well, it is. Isn't it? $11. Okay. Have a nice day, Uchi. Thank you. How's my mashke doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. So, I hear Raleigh has been dropping by. Look, you are the bravest person that I know, ever since we were kids. And you were mean, but I'm glad you think so. So, what are you waiting for? Ask him out. I don't think I'm ready. You don't understand. I was texting him when he crashed. Good evening, my name is Constance Talking Crow, and I would like to thank all of you for coming out here tonight. It is a great honor that Mr. Sharptail has asked me to be his campaign manager. 
I have been reading about him since I was young, and I have to admit, I am a big fan of his movies. Mr. Sharptail has always stood for the people. He knows this tribe needs a court system that delivers the same justice white people can expect. He wants a constitution that creates a four-year term of election and a stable government. Mr. Sharptail wants to take the casino dollars and give everyone a debit card. Debit cards? He's gonna sell top to bottom full of buffalo shit that his breath stinks. <laughs> and I am proud to introduce a candidate who, when he promotes our future in wind energy, knows what a true economic development means. Renewable energy, green energy, our candidate and next tribal president, Mr. Howard Sharptail. Thank you, Constance. And thank you to my Oglala brothers and sisters for coming out tonight. Your presence here tells me that you desire change and that you support my critical platform. All it shows is that us people love to eat. <laughs> we are a proud people. We are brothers to the buffalo, brothers to the eagle. So I say his whole family has ice. <laughs> Perhaps there are those of us who think this is funny, but they are not warriors of the people. As brothers of the eagle, we are children of the wind. There's something for your damn notebook. It is Grandfather Tate that will set us on a bright new dawn. A path to wealth and success as a tribe. We must not just survive, but thrive. I have wealthy people willing to invest in our future, to finance wind turbines and Transmission line. Well, hell, they sure did provide us with a fine meal. These guys don't know who they're messing with. You better get out of here. sure do work fast. I uh, ran into your dad at the post office this morning. He was hanging up a help wanted sign and hell, the way he was limping, I figured he could use some help. That's all right with you, isn't it? Raleigh Lamoureux. Oh, you're the guy from the powwow, aren't you? The dancer? I'm honored that you remembered me. Why can't you see that my candidate intends to end the poverty that is everywhere around here? There you go. You and your candidate. Always talking about poverty and justice. A better court system. Oh my. What a joke. Why? Why is that a joke? Like for instance, my uncle has been trying to divorce my aunt Agnes for four years. And you call that a justice system? Hm. It's a joke on you. Because people here are not as stupid as Mr. Sharptail likes to think. I never said that. You didn't have to. All of his campaign promises sound so good to you, but that's because of your naivety, not ours. I came from New York City. I went to college. Why would anyone want a court system like the white folks have? A system of justice where you can get all the justice you can afford. Wind power? What are we gonna have to sell to have the billions necessary to have enough generators to get rich? Get rich? Who's gonna get rich? Only your candidate. Who's paying him? Who is he really working for?
Hey, Susie. Hello, Mary. So glad you can make it. You know I wouldn't miss it. <clears throat> well, let's get started, shall we? Jamie, Jamie is a joy to have in class. He has a pretty good grasp on all of our material. He even insists on helping the other kids. It's so cute, he thinks I don't notice. I'm sure he has his flaws. He can be challenging at home. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, according to my math and reading levels, he's ahead of most of his peers. Well, that's great. There is, there is one thing that's kind of hard to bring up. I have the students do a drawing for me of their family each year, you know, just to know the, get to know the kids. And, well, this is what he drew. Ever since his father passed away, he's been yearning for another man's attention. I am sure that's what he's projecting here. Well, that's likely. But knowing Jim died, I decided to ask him who that was. And he was like, it's Uncle Raleigh. He's my dad now. And I just, I just thought you should know. <laughs> well, I find that strange. He, Raleigh and Jim were best friends. And that's all that we are. We've been best friends since we were kids. Just friends. At this time, I would like to introduce you to Kea Hahepiwi, also known as Darnell Kumsabo. She's going to come and uh, say a few words. Mitakuyapi le tayetuki wopila ichichiapi, Danel amachiapi, na nakunya woyute li la ota, cha ipichiaya. I put some clothes on a bed for you, and you must take a shower. Yes, ma'am. You see what I was saying about women and this girl? Constance, Dad. Her name is Constance. I know. Constance. To raise your kids to think like she does, like a white man, with her college degrees and useless facts. What can she do? I don't know, Dad. I don't know her that well. Maybe not at all. But I doubt she'll ever think like a man, white or Indian. I suppose not. But with all the girls that you've been with, I've never seen you act on a like with this one. Raleigh, she's pretty enough, I'll, I'll admit. But don't let your second head do all the thinking for you. I'm worried about you. As usual, I appreciate your unique point of view. She worries me too. Thank you, Doris. You're welcome. Okay, 
Ease, Julie. I told you I'm not Mike anymore. I'm Caesar. You got five bucks, Julie? No, I do not have five bucks. I need, need that for Mike. I have to go across the street and get a wiener. I'm hungry, and they got the biggest wieners. Morning, Dorothy. How's that new grandson of yours? Oh, he's getting big, almost 10 months now. Ain't too bad he's sore, though. Getting teeth. Well, my Bobby got his teeth at eight months. And believe me, I know. I need one money order for $21.95. I need another one for $35. I need another one for $98. One for $40. Thank you, Rufus. check the mail? Yeah, I mean, no, no, yes. Uh, I checked the mail, but I didn't get to stun them. Why not? Because they needed stamps and I didn't get the stamps. So? So, people were in line getting money orders and visiting. I mean, they were being so rude. What's so rude? People taking their sweet time to pay bills at the post office. I mean, there are weird, rude guys there too. Where else would they pay their bills? At home with a check. Don't tell me you don't have a checking account. Well, actually, no. I did once, but like most folks here, I gave it up after it started being way too expensive. Too expensive? You know, overdrafts. Overdrafting the, the deposit you made to cover the overdrafts. Hell, I think one month, my checking account cost me $240. That's why you have to stay on top of that, Delia. Yeah, sure, honey. You're new here. Live here a while with short-lived jobs, big families, funerals, politics, and poor relatives. And then tell me that. What has that got to do with anything? It has everything to do with things here. Folks here are poor. Banks steal from us every way they can. They charge high interest rates when Indians go to buy a car or a Christmas loan. You put money in the bank, but with late fees and what they charge for overdrafts, it's never enough to cover all the charges. The $3 check you wrote for milk costs you $56. It seems they can never invent enough ways to steal from us. So we have to cut them off. Cut them off? For their own good. Yeah, by using money orders, people don't get their money stolen and it keeps the banks from stealing, so it does everyone good. Just like it says in the Bible, thou shalt not steal. We're trying to give those Wasichus a shot at heaven. Besides, folks use the post office to catch up on the news. You mean gossip. 
whatever. Constance, it's really nice to finally get you to meet this crew. Oh, so you're Constance. Um, is there anything I could help with? No, I have my nosy sister to help. Yeah. Um, you can go sit down and visit. Dinner will be ready soon. The bread smells delicious. Oh, my mom made it. <laughs> Thank you. Dad's usually quite a talker, but I guess for you he just feels like he shouldn't. Why not? Doesn't he like me? No, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not that he doesn't like you. In fact, it's actually kind of a compliment. A compliment? I don't see it. Well, in our way, traditionally father-in-laws never used to talk to their daughter-in-laws. Out of respect and all. I mean, I brought over a couple girls that he talked to, but not you. Really? So that makes me kind of special? Yeah. Time to bowl up. Sarah is showing off tonight, so it's Taniga. Taniga? Ooh, sounds scrumptious. <laughs> Just kidding, girl. It's not guts, it's spaghetti. So, Sarah tells me you went to college. What did you study? Boys? No, I studied marketing and Indian studies. <laughs> Mom, they hated me. I doubt it. No, they really did. They teased me all night. They're probably just being ignorant. No, I think it's more than that. Maybe. Or they're probably just teasing you just to see if you can take teasing. It's a common sport around here. Did Roland tease you? No, but he didn't defend me either. I'm never going back there. <laughs> never. Really? Never? You were in fine form last night. I mean, you guys could have given her a chance. She never met you before. Damn raccoon got in here. Dad! Why do you and Elmer avoid each other? We don't avoid each other. We just don't have any reason to see each other. What do you want me to do? Go to the casino with him? You could come over and help me shoe all them horses. You could at least give him a chance. Why? Elmer, since he was a kid, he thinks he's a full blood Indian. Hell, he's, he's a white man. An apple. Just a brown white man. He used to call me Roy Rogers. So, who's Danell? Danell? Uh, Danell who? Gosh, you're bad. Danell, the pretty girl you were dancing with at the night dance. Danell comes above. I don't know. I don't really know her. 
You don't know her. Well, you looked pretty happy with her the night I saw you. Wow. And you're upset about that? No. About her? Of course not. We were supposed to be. We were head dancers. Well, for your information, she is not and has never been my girlfriend. We were each asked individually to be dancers for that night dance. It's kind of an honor, you know, to be asked by the family that sponsored it. Well, it sure looked like you guys were happy. Well, I was. I like to dance. Is there something wrong with that? Besides, that's why we were there for. To smile, to lead the dance, to create a good mood so that everyone could come and dance and forget their problems even for one night. So, who is it that you want me to meet? No, I want him to meet you, my Lala Johnny. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Someone very special to me. Uh, yeah, 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 the <laughs> Shungunak or Raki Chapiki rode your hair. Dog Hawk Chesniki hair, Hetchumpi Chasna, Wamakash Gunki. You sing with Chapi. Hetchums Hetchums actually do any Unchiaki hair, Trogawa Grans Parkish Nichaya. Trotchin Sutaki hair. Our Blazina. A Wangwa Kuana, Dog Lugiga, Oaking Don Hoganichella. A chunk Don Hetcha. Yes, and then some. So Lala, after you meet her, can you tell me that we'll make it? Yes, I want Huh, well, we better get back. You ride like your grandpa Johnny. I love her, Dad. Well, that's pretty sudden, Raleigh. Well, it is what it is. Are you thinking of marrying her or just making Trawe with her? Dad. I mean, what you're talking about in our way is serious. Folks like to joke about it, but it's no nonsense. It's called walking the Mallard's Road. Mallard's Road? What do you mean? A true Lakota marriage, that's what I mean. A true partnership. Wherever the female goes, the male follows. But also, wherever the male goes, you will see the female close by. 
Their devotion for each other is so great that when one of them dies, the other never takes another mate. Do you love her that much? Life is short, son. Make the wrong decision, and life can instead grow very long. favorite. And grandson, so nice of you to come for lunch. Hey. No. You good? Hmm? So how's my favorite granddaughter been doing? For how many granddaughters you do have, I'll take that for what it is. Happy birthday anyway, you old coot. <laughs> Lala, are you trying to read my heart again? You know, Mary, I have always found it easy to read your heart. I guess it's a good thing not all people can read my heart. Yeah, so it looks like the big guy here is hungry. Right? Thank you. Yes, I do know what it's like to miss someone. He's... He's been gone for a long time. I should be over it. My love's been gone for ten years now, Mary. And I miss her every day. And yours has been gone for a year. I should be over it. Well, nothing heals the human heart like New love. Right there? You would know. <laughs> I'll have to admit, my dad wouldn't have gotten this far without your help. I'll get the greatest shot for marketing. Well, that's nice of you. So, what do you plan on doing after this? Mm, kind of depends. On what? Lots of things. Raleigh, you're so irritating. Like, what do you mean? On who needs stuff done, I guess, for one. Well, what do you want? I don't think about it too much, really. Actually, I'd like to finish college one day. Well, that's great. How many credits do you have left? Not many. Not many? Well, six, I guess, last I checked. How long has it been since you've had six credits? Three years. Three years? And here you are pulling fence? I cannot understand you. I mean, what, don't you have dreams? Of course. All people have dreams. What about you? What are your dreams? Mm, I'll tell folks when I'm ready to move forward. When will that be? Don't hardly know when that'll be. People approach me, relatives mostly, approach me to help them with things. <laughs> well, you'll never have a real job. 
you'll just end up like your dad. Who would want that? Who would want you? I mean, a woman wants a guy that's worth something. Worth something. And what does that mean? A guy who can provide for his family? Well, isn't that nice? Even I agree. With what? That you think that way. What do you mean? Can't you look at me while you're talking to me? So old-fashioned, in a white sort of way. And what do you mean by that? Well, you're always talking about women's issues and the male chauvinists here on the res. And now, now you want a man to take care of you? Constance, you of all people shouldn't need that. Why not? Come on, Connie. You're a liberated woman. Ha! 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 A liberated woman. I'll grow on you. Yeah, like warts. You, Roly? Ease out, you're serious. You're not that ugly. <laughs> so that's why you came out after dark, huh? So the folks wouldn't see you? Come on, cuz. Maybe it's not just for ugly people. You do still make flutes, don't you? Don't tell me you buy into that traditional nonsense, do you, Roly? I don't know, Doist. At this point, I'm willing to try anything. Where's that notebook of yours? I suppose you're collecting for oral tradition again, huh? <laughs> Have you had the dream? Dream? You know, of elk. No, not really. Well, well, maybe once. Once. Ouch! Jeez, Roly. <laughs> You're really oosh, aren't you? <laughs> well, I could teach you how to make a flute. Even teach you how to play it. But it comes with no 90-day guarantee, limited lifetime warranty implied. <laughs> well, you do know about the traditions. When I make a flute, it's the people who say it's the breath. Especially the old ones. They say it's the breath. The breath? Well, duh, you gotta have a duck's head carbon to corling flute. <laughs> yeah, right. A duck's head? You know, for the sacred breath. Sacred breath? It's the breath that comes from the beak bill of a duck that casts a spell over everything. The spell? You know, the spell that keeps couples together for life. Speaking of which, what do you got to trade, cuz? is my cousin, and I've known him since he was a boy. I even went to Cleveland with my mother to stay with him. He's brilliant, isn't he? 
Oh yeah, I guess you could say that he's brilliant. But I would have to say he's more like Iktomi. <laughs> Iktomi? You know, the spider, the trickster. <laughs> My husband is not too fond of him. Why is that? You'd have to ask him, I guess. But I think it has something to do with the fact that he's run for chairman so many times. No, it has more to do with the fact that he's never done anything for anyone unless he's figured in his own benefit. Something you uh, white folks call a uh, cost-benefit analysis? We Lakota, we have something different. Something we call Okolakichie. Okolakichie? You know, doing for some, something for someone without expecting anything back. A couple years ago when I was on tribal council, <clears throat> He uh, wrote up a proposal to bring a bank in the town. Goodness knows we could use a bank on the reservation, but he wouldn't introduce us to the banker unless we all signed an agreement making him the sole investor. And I suppose that's why you won't vote for him. Even though he has all of these outside contacts, don't you think people around here should start modernizing their thinking? <laughs> it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the people think. We are what we are. Personally, I don't think Howard could get elected dog catcher. Our history has taught us to be like the Shunkmani too. Oh, I'm sorry, the coyote. Always looking over the back of our shoulders to see if what appears to be there really is. I brought the mower over. If Jamie could pick up his toys, I'll give it a once over. You think it needs it? I push the mower. Sure. Just get your shoes on first. He sure listens to you. So, what you been up to? Not much. Come on, that's what you always say. Well, I've been working for the Talking Crow family, doing ranch work mostly. I don't know that I've met them. Their daughter works for the Sharptail campaign. You mean there's actually someone helping his campaign? Do you think she's cute? Well, you know me. I'm just a lonely guy and she's not related to me. How often does that happen? You poor baby. Well, you asked. I never did. You just did. I never asked you about your new dream girl and your failed love life. <laughs> wow. Ouch. Well, it's back to unemployment for me. What about you? <sighs> me too, I guess. Maybe I should start looking for a job back in New York City. I mean, I can't believe people could be so stupid. It wasn't even close. John has no camp? has been chairman and did nothing. Election? He didn't even campaign. Yeah, I could have told you that. I know you believed in Harold. You put your heart into it. Well, girls, I'm sorry to say that this will be your last paycheck. If I'd won, things would be a little bit different. You know, it gets to me. I swear, some folks around here are just so damned stupid. <sighs> you know, this, this tribe can just go to hell for all I can. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm never running for chairman ever again. Constance, one for you. Thank you. And Delia, one wow. for you as well. Thank you. Oh, by the way, before I forget, there's a bonus in each one of those checks for you guys. It's for, uh, all your loyalty. Wow, thank you. He's a far more gracious loser than I would have thought. Gracious? Honey, he's smarter than any of us. 
Hell, if he'd won, he'd actually have to do something. This way he keeps his campaign money and life is back to normal. Campaign money? Yup. He didn't even have to build one damned windmill for his rich contributors. didn't break down. Why are you hitching? I gave it to Doist muskrat coat. That's not what Doist tells me. Okay, okay. You gonna give me a ride or just bust me? Both. Look, I got a cousin. He's really ugly. But he says he knows that, uh, that, that Roger, Beartooth, says he makes the best flutes. And man, you should see his wife. She's blonde, she's rich, and she's German. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Just trying to help, bro. Just trying to help. So I've been thinking about it, about last night. Oh geez, I'm sorry. I would have warned you, but I thought you might not come. Well, it's pretty obvious that your family likes to enjoy themselves, even if it is hurting other people. Oh, I don't think they thought that way. In fact, Dad studied you pretty carefully while you're sitting there pretending not to. <laughs> oh yeah, what did he notice? Lots of things. Like what? Name one. You notice that you don't have any tattoos. Oh, and that worried him? Oh, am I sorry? I thought that'd be a good sign, like a good thing. I think you're taking it a little wrong. He was concerned. Concerned? What do you mean? He was worried that you might not be recognized in the spirit world. Wait, what? You mean your Indian studies professor never told you that? No, I didn't know I was supposed to have a tattoo to get into heaven. I mean, maybe I should just get one for you, you jackass. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is what we believe. Don't you think that it's time for people to move on from this nonsense? That's probably why they're still stuck here. So, that is how you think of us, as backward. That's your word. Lack of motivation. I mean, no wonder why my father's so down on your father. Hell, he doesn't even have a job. Hell, he doesn't even have a job? Wow. My dad is a very bright man. He reads like a vacuum. Hell, there's not much that he doesn't know about. He would have loved to have a job in what white people call a career. But in his day, there were no jobs. That's why your family left. Dad stayed. It just shows how little you know. My dad is always busy doing something for someone. He never sits still. He is Ikjay Wichasha. Oh, Ikjay Wichasha. What does that mean? Unemployed? A common man. A man of the people. A man of the people. Okay. Who is unemployed? Yes. He took a vow as a young man to live his life that way, and I believe he does. Didn't your Indian studies classes teach you that? Very funny. You know I never bring up my education? 
It's always you who brings it up. Bud, why don't you just leave me alone? Fine, maybe I should. Where's Doist? He's at sweat, burning rocks, just to make sure his love juju works for you tonight. I really like this girl. You like this girl, or you love this girl? Let me tell you something, this duck whistle ain't about no like. This is have or keep here. So go on, make me proud. <clears throat> I don't know. All of a sudden, this doesn't seem like a very good idea. <laughs> it was your idea. Go. Isn't it great to be back in our favorite cafe? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. It's great. Uh, it's like I've never left. It is. It's great to have you back. I really missed you. Um, uh, yeah, I've missed this cafe too. Earth to Constance, what's the matter? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. I'm sure you've got a lot more on your mind than just me. I mean, things have been going really great for you. You got your old job back and all. And you're not stuck on the res anymore. It's in the mud and the dirt on the reservation. You never seem to fit in anywhere. You seem so out of place there. No question about that. I guess. Now, what's an old goat like you doing brushing down that horse? Yeah, let's do a little pasta leg lip, so. You know, if your old ugly mug don't scare this horse into sending you flying, he must be blind. <laughs> oh, Claude, look at the wall. Watch day. And in tacos, I'm back with you, like it does give you a wall. What's going on, she's not Nah, she's holding up. But it's time. I think she should move on. Oh. Hey, Mona. Hey, did you hear? Working here, I hear a lot of things. Well, do you remember that that girl Raleigh was so obsessed about? Constance? Mm -hmm. Della told me that she went back to New York for good. If my rezzed out middle-aged country boy Raleigh doesn't wake up, 
Wake up what? <laughs> You're right. If he doesn't wake up to the fact that he's the only country boy out there, and a pathetic one at that. Yeah, so did I. No. Well, Constance left. It is, Nia. Went back to her city boyfriend in New York. Oh, man. She sure did a number on me. Or. Maybe I did it to myself. Been known to do that sort of thing. One of my gonna pay my sansa. Not all good on blocky law. They aren't shot any shit as little jazz. I can't pet on jail. You only keep it there. Maybe Constance was never meant for this court. So, what you up to? About 165. That is the saddest thing I've heard all day. Yeah, I guess it is pretty sad. <laughs> I figured they were giving away trees at the cap office, and I thought I'd plant you a shelter belt. Would you like a tree? Can I help? I guess I'd like to see the two of you planting a tree. I mean, it will take years for it to grow into something meaningful, like uh, reduced heating or uh, to give you some shade. Yeah, years to turn into something meaningful. I'll tell you what, you do what you got to do, and I'll make us some dinner. Is he okay? Is he sick? Okay, no, I'll go and check on him. If I have to take him to Pine Ridge, I will. Okay, I will. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm sure he'll be fine. Okay. I'll talk to you later. What you two big boys waiting for? <laughs> That's a good question. A very good question. The spirits told you something, didn't they? They told me 
that there's more to my old playground enemy than I thought. It's not him with the health problems. It's his wife. He moved back here because of Louise. Oh my, Mr. Lamoureux. Do you think you could actually be wrong about Elmer? <laughs> What are you doing here? Oh, just trimming your trees before I mow your lawn. Okay. I'll go get you some water. Okay. I brought you some water. Thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> so, where is the big guy? <laughs> he, he's at his cousin's. Well, that's fine. I just know he gets a kick out of helping me. Yeah, he sure does. So... Constance is back? Wow. You sure get to the point. Actually, no. She went back to New York. Ouch. You look... You look bad. It must have been serious. Yeah. I guess you could say that. Well, I find that interesting. Why is that? I'm not getting any younger, and sometimes I think, uh, sometimes I think that if things had been different, you and I could have made a good team. Could have? We could have made a good team? Or do you, are you saying that we should? Why can't you just say it, Raleigh? Every time a new woman comes around, you chase her. But you never change. Why can't you just say, we will make a good team? You wouldn't know a woman's love if it kicked you in the butt. I feel sorry for you. Dang. I never saw you so dramatic. Dramatic? You want to know some drama, Raleigh? Constance, the most recent love of your life, left you behind. Yeah, but what does that mean? It means that you're not only blind, but you're naive too. Why don't you just leave me alone? Fine. Maybe I should. Come on, you know I appreciate it. Oh, geez. You scared me. It means that you're not only blind, but you're naive, too. Maybe Constance was never meant for this work. What are you doing here? I don't see no lawnmower. I didn't come to do any yard work. I came to take you both for a ride. Oh, and where's that? Hop in and you'll find out. Grandpa Johnny was visiting with Lala Ted the other day. Yeah, and? I mean, they've been friends since, uh, since boarding school. Wow, that sure is a long time, isn't it, buddy? 
All right, so our grandpas were talking. Yeah, they were talking. About? They were talking about all sorts of things back and forth. You just want me to hate you, don't you? Well, one of the things that they were talking about was how all your life, all you ever wanted to do was live in a country and raise some buffalo. Well, Lala Ted said that. You see the five young ones in that group right over there? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, I saved my money from working at the Buffalo B&B, &B, and I made a deal with Mr. Blackfeather and made a down payment. Okay, uh, down payment on what? On those buffalo. All right, so what on God's green earth does that have to do with me? Well, now I'm a buffalo rancher. Really? Well, that's great, Raleigh. At least you're finally getting serious about something. Serious enough to tell you about one thing. Kick your Uncle Raleigh for me. You're closer. Uncle Raleigh. Harder, you're not kicking him hard enough. One of the things that I've noticed is that since I am a buffalo rancher and you've always wanted to raise buffalo and I'm tired of Jamie always calling me uncle, well, if you were to marry me, you'd automatically become a buffalo rancher and Jamie could call me dad. Here we go!